Well, everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed game six. Because I sure as shit know I did. Two, not two, one, two, one. Boston got that goal at the end. 0.1 seconds left. Whoop de doo, whatever. Eliminates Joseph Wall's shutout. I think I would have been first shutout since Jack Campbell, game one, 21 22, if I'm not correct. But neither of that, n- none of that matters. None of that matters. Everyone thought they were dead. Everyone thought they were dead in the water. But guess what? Like that ratty old little white dog, the Leafs refuse to die. I don't care that they're if they're blind. I don't care if they're pissed themselves. I don't care if the dog can't go to the washroom anymore. They're like that ratty old little dog. Refuse to die, baby. That it was a full team effort. I don't think you could point to one player tonight. Point to one player that didn't play well. I, I don't really. All of them had their moments. I realized there was turnovers, long shifts, blah, blah, blah. Everyone makes mistakes in a game. But my goodness, that was a complete, complete effort. I want to highlight guys that I thought played best. I want to highlight what to look for again in game seven. I mean, that score more goals than Boston. I think that's pretty damn simple right there. Before I get into all of that, SVP Sports, this is a message to you. I know this is supposed to sound like a sponsorship, whatever. I have nothing written because guess what? SVP Sports owes us another item in the pot. SVP Sports, we're shaking you down. What's the next item in the pot we have to give to the people? Because this, as we said, the contest ends when the series ends. We got a jersey on the, on tap right now. We got a hat on tap right now. There's gonna be something else. I'm just waiting for our friends at SVP Sports to let us know because they ended pretty damn late. I don't expect them to, you know, respond at this hour. I don't expect anyone to respond. Everyone should be in bed by now. But. That's just our message from SVP Sports. How to? How do you win this? How do you win the hat? How do you win the jersey? How do you win the mystery item that we got coming up? Comment on the YouTube video. Who was... What should we do? Who's your least favorite Bruins player? How about that one? Comment on this YouTube video. Who is your least favorite Bruins player? Who do you hope that when they go to a restaurant next time, the waiter, waitress, the server screws up their order and they don't have the balls to get it corrected so they're forced to eat the wrong meal? Who do you least like on the Bruins? Comment that on the YouTube. Let's get into some action, shall we? Who is my MVP tonight? Well, the Leafs can't score goals. They can't score more than two, it seems. Game two was an enigma, really. That was the only time they scored three. I don't know. Solar clips? I don't know. Who cares? What the hell am I even saying? But in saying that, the Leafs cannot put the biscuit in the basket. Who put the biscuit? Who buttered the biscuit and put it in the basket twice? tonight twice and that was William Nylander what a game from him they reunite the Nyes and Tavares well no we didn't play that that much together this year they reunite him and Tavares again in this one here's the thing I thought all three players played pretty well I thought Tavares you know power plays whatever Tavares, what I thought was really important about his game is that in the third period, you're up one goal. You don't want to take too many chances, but you do want to still generate offense. Like sitting back on a one nothing lead, what's a better way to do that in theory is sitting back on a two goal lead. Oh, what do you think about that? And John Tavares got two excellent grade a chances in the third period there didn't result in it but just to see him generate that high level of chances in such a tight checking game and such a tight defensive game on both fronts i thought that was really really encouraging and just overall he played well matthew nice that assist was 
wonderful. I thought he was solid again tonight. I think it was after the Nylander gold, he almost had a chance there as well on the wraparound. Like, this kid's just a dog. Overtime winner in game five to keep the Leafs alive. Game six, another monster game. But William Nylander, my goodness. I want to break down that first goal in a bit when we do the clips. But that first goal is just an excellent display of skating. The second goal was just a terrific, that's just a nasty little bit of business, was it not? Fake the shot, flip to the backhand, slide a five hole right through Jeremy Swayman. Are you shitting me? What a game from William Nylander tonight. That was just a monster. Like, like everyone talks about, oh, we pay all these these flipping idiots all this money, and all they do is head to the golf course in the beginning of May. Well, how's this for put try this on for size? Guy we just gave almost a hundred million dollars. Had a monster game in a do or die game. So that was awesome to see. I cannot I, I like just and if you missed last episode, why am I wearing a backwards jersey? I don't know. Last game, I was just like, let's try it. I haven't tried this, and they have not played as well as they should have. And it worked. And then I have to do it again tonight. And <laughs> now I got to do it again. Now I got to do it all the way till June. So what a game from William Nylander. Sort of the unsung here. Like There was, there was a ton of players. Let me just list them off. The ones I thought all played well tonight. Benoit McCabe were a terrific pairing. I thought Joel Edmondson was wonderful tonight. Obviously, the Nylander Tavares Nyes line was wonderful. Um, There's a couple chances from Domi Bertuzzi Marner, so that was encouraging there. Uh, Domi, I'll get into his game in a bit. The depth I thought was very, very good late in killing some time. Did an okay bit of job generating some chances. Dewar was hit and miss. I thought along the boards he had some trouble. Getting the puck out at times, it resulted in chances the other way, but really did rebound. I think it was on like the next shift late in the third period. And that like that cycle down low in the third period, I think it was like three minutes left, was terrific. And that just that suffocated the Bruins and really, really put them on a bad foot almost before they emptied the net. They could not get the puck out of their zone against the Leafs technical, technically the Leafs fourth line. The third line I even thought was they, they had some chances. Nick Robertson had a couple great looks in this one. I realized that's like a sheltered third line that you don't really want to put out there all the time. That's technically to me, that's the fourth line. But I thought they they did a good job generating some chances. I don't think they really gave up too, too much. I haven't taken a look at what the numbers were. But, you know, like for a line that you don't have the most amount of confidence in, I'll say, they, they played pretty well tonight, right? So let's take a look at the forward lines. Who, according to the numbers, played well and such? And obviously the Nylander Tavares line, and they did. Uh, ooh, the fourth line kind of got caved. Wow, at five on five, these are some very unexpected results. Huh. What do you know? So obviously... At least did not do as well as I thought. Huh, that's a a fun live reaction right there. Hmm. The shots on goal were what they were because at least won the shots on goal battle. It just looks like the in tight chances really favored the Bruins in terms of uh, expected goals battle because that really does that kind of matches the eye test there. The Bruins actually. So expected goals wise, the Bruins won this game 3.26 to 1.97 at five on five. Scoring chances for were 32 to 17 for the Bruins as well. The Leafs got 23 shots to 20, though. So a lot of perimeter shots from the Leafs. Not that they didn't get good chances. They got a lot in the third period, actually. But a couple, it was there were few and far between, I will say. Hmm. That's interesting. So we'll get into that. In a bit. First, I do want to give a shout out to our friends at Manscaped. Here's a new ad for you. Hey there, Beach. I'm not saying that. Are you ready? Let's skip that first line. I don't know why they put that in there. What the heck? Hey there, Beach Babes. 
Sounds weird saying that. Anywho, are you ready to soak up the summer vibes and unveil your ultimate beach bod? Well, you're in luck because our friends over at Manscaped have you covered from head to toe with Performance Package 5.0. This ultimate all-in-one grooming kit is set to have you looking and feeling your best in the summer sun. Trust Manscaped and unlock the confidence you need to turn heads this season. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping 20 percent off and free shipping with the code rink rat that is r-i-n-k-r-a-t let's make summer this summer your smoothest one yet i have all the manscape products i use pretty much all of them i love the body wash i love the the razors that they have they last forever manscape.com promo code rink rat i want wanted to briefly get into why I love the Benoit McKay pairing so much because it doesn't look like the underlying number is going to love them too, too much really. To me, that was the line. I didn't really see much in terms of, you know, chances going against them. Uh, how'd they do expected goals wise? Hmm. They had the tough pairings. I can't even find Jake McCabe trying to do this on the fly. It is what it is. It's probably pretty boring listening to me say that shit. But I thought they were terrific. I'm going to get into a clip where they they were able to, off the rush, keep everything to the outside, kill plays, cycle them back the other way. Jake McCabe actually had a fantastic chance from Domi in the first period where he streaked in, or second period, I believe it was. Yeah, second period, and just missed an open net, essentially. So that was... His offensive generation that, you know, he gave didn't, none of those guys really, they, those two didn't generate anything offensively, but it felt like just in terms of killing plays, not giving up anything, they were exactly what the Leafs needed in this one. And like Simone Benoit, the more this series has gone on, the more he's impressed me. I know I criticized him, I think it was on the PK. Uh, There was the dumb penalty in game two. Like there's been some moments where you're like, darn it. But you got to think this guy was on waivers this year. His extension is only for 1.35. We're asking a lot from him to be the shutdown guy, the shutdown pair for the Leafs against the Bruins right now. And you know what? The last two games, I've I've liked how he's played. I think he's really done a good job being physical, killing plays. Um, his gap control to me has been fantastic as well. Like they're giving him tough, tough assignments. And what was he? He played the fourth most amongst defensemen. Wow, Riley Labushkin and then Jake McCabe. Um, in terms of zone starts for McCabe, let's take a look. Primarily defensive. Primarily defensive just as we expected. And they were good. Lubushkin's been good too. Never mind. How many real mistakes have you seen from him this series? Three assists in six games too? I've liked what I've seen from Lubushkin, but I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Jake McCabe, Simone Benoit. McCabe on his off wing too. I was worried coming into these playoffs about McCabe playing his off wing just because of what we saw last year in terms of just mistakes and fumbling pucks in his own end. I think with the Leafs strategy change, which has mainly been punt the puck into the neutral zone, deal with the puck, uh, the puck battles out there instead of within the zone. Meaning the, the, the forwards are stretching the zone. They're trying to, you know, get behind the D or push the D back to into the neutral zone. And then the defensemen are either just flipping it up the ice off the glass and out, just deal with the problem essentially in the neutral zone. And I think that's really, really helped both Benoit and McCabe. All right. So just a solid game from solid, solid game from them. Um, you know what? Let's get into some clips, shall we not? I. I'm not sure how this works at the stage. There we are. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. Oh, 
This is, this one is it. Not really, actually. Oh, here it is, right here. So watch this. This is Brad Marchand with the puck in the neutral zone. It's a uh, two-on-two-ish, two, two, on two, two, on two -ish, I'd say. He feeds the puck over to David Pasternak along the boards. Pasternak walks in with it. Just watch the gap control from uh, from Simone Benoit on this one. The gap control, the stick position. Look how much room Pasternak has on this. He is suffocated. Suffocated, can't get anywhere with the puck, can't even skate just around in the non-dangerous areas with it. Benoit free a little bit, and then watch as his D partner, after it's knocked free a little bit, just a touch, McCabe comes in, pokes it free. Benoit up the boards to Cal Yarncroc. He chips it out. That's a one nothing game, less than eight minutes left. And that's a fantastic just smother the off the the opposition in the defensive zone. And not only that, not only don't allow them to get anywhere, get the puck out as well. So that was just an example that I thought was that wasn't just to me, that was just like a, a sample, an appetizer of what we saw some other clips when I feel like it's appropriate. Whoops. There we are. So who else did I think played well tonight? Well, we had Neil Ander out there. I thought Max Domi had a very interesting game. What do I mean by an interesting game? Well, in terms of... I'm not going to get this right. That's fine. In terms of his game, let's start with the negative. I thought he wasted a lot of puck possessions. I thought he was just trying to fire it into dangerous areas like a little too hastily, like just very low percent, way too many low percentage passes. Like, you know, like it, it was, I understand you're, you're trying to, oh, that's where the danger is. That's where you're supposed to get the puck to you know, to score. But I I thought it was very, very inefficient and it was causing the play to go back the other way way too many times. Now let's get to the positives. He generated a lot of chances in this one. I thought he was overall, I thought he was very good in this game. Offensive generation, he had that breakaway late in the game. He shot the puck. Max Domi shot the puck. Are you kidding me? Wow. Um, there was a decent, yeah, like the the possession he had from Mar Marner got it to him in a pretty good area. Tried to, again, feed it to Bertuzzi. I guess Bertuzzi was covered in that one, so it is what it is. But on top of that, there was the feed to Jake McCabe for a very good chance. He was... He was pretty good in terms of he, he generated chances tonight. Really got to give him kudos there. And for next game, I think a little bit more patience with the puck and being a little bit more willing to pass it into lower danger areas. I think to extend possessions, that's really going to help his overall results. Also, he was a monster in the dot yet again. So, Max don't. To get into another guy from that line, just to, you know, keep on theme with it. Tyler Bertuzzi set up the Max Omi breakaway. He's taking a beating in front, so you got to love that. He loves, he blocks shots like crazy too. He really, really, really needs to figure out line changes. I haven't looked at the numbers. Hopefully I get a chance to tomorrow and I'm able to post it. He gets caught out on long shifts Last man out there, a lot. More than I've seen from any players on the lease. And it's a detriment because then he's absolutely bagged in the defensive zone. He's slow as it is. And then he ends up trying to dive for pucks. And we saw he dove for a puck and he completely missed it. And it went back the other way for a chance. And by back the other way, I mean it happened at the blue line. So Bertie really, really needs to figure out the line changes. He drew a penalty tonight. He's gritty. Like, I'm, I have no problems with Bertuzzi. Just the long changes, man. Those are killer 
fumbles pucks too, but that that's neither that's not something that's going to change. What's he's going to get one of the he's going to go play street hockey for nine hours tomorrow and fix that? No, it's it's it is what it is with him. But so appreciate the complete beatings he's been taking in this series because he's taken a lot of them and he still remained gritty, which I love. Just get off the ice. When everyone else is getting off the ice, please, for the love of God, get off the ice. Because I feel like this has been an issue all year with him. Uh, Mitch Marner in this game, you know, thought he should have done a little bit more for the kind of assignment he was given. It was a little bit on the quieter end. It was okay. But again, a little bit on the quieter end. He had the he had a very good chance on the three on two, a couple other decent plays here and there, but nothing really like nothing really to scream about. I thought game five was a little bit better. It was better actually, but you know he was below that in this game. I would say I can only really think of the one offensive chance that he generated. Um, so hopefully he can, he can step it up in game seven. I have no, like he was okay. He was, he was okay in this one, nothing terrific, but would like a little bit more out of him, uh, for, for game seven. I will say that. So why did the Leafs win this one? We'll take a break from talking about players. Why did the Leafs win this one? 2-1 game. It feels weird saying 2-1. It was a 2-0 game. That was, that was bullshit. Everyone stopped playing. Whatever. What was different about this game than games 1, 3, 4? What was different? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. It's, it's, just, it's really actually the simplest things. Special teams, you did not lose the special teams game. Score one. Boston didn't rinse on the power play. And while you didn't take any dumb penalties, you just had the one that was kind of a Fugazi tripping call that they were looking to they were looking to penalize the Leafs on that one. And I will say, oh, they missed the Holmberg cross check. Why is Mason Lorai holding his stick? He's holding his stick. He tries to shake him off once, doesn't work, and Lorai. And then he gets pushed into the boards as a result. The ref watched it. The ref saw it. That's why it wasn't called a cross check. Don't hold on to the other guy's stick. Pretty simple. But so didn't lose the special teams game. Penalty killed. You know, it's a lot easier to kill one one penalty than it is five. So that's pretty simple. You didn't give up any bad goals. You actually your goalie made some great saves in this one. And yeah, you got two instead of. You got two final. Well, two is not good enough, but it makes it a lot easier to win when you're not losing the special teams game. You're not spotting the team one or two goals, right? And it's also easier to kill penalties when your goalie's making the saves that they should, right? Wool's been excellent. Knock on, knock on wood. Joseph Wool has been excellent at tracking pucks through traffic. That was my criticism coming into this series. Didn't seem like he was tracking long shots very well because there was plays where it was, you could see it through the screen. And he, just, he was just missing them. This series, have you seen any of that? Nope. Kids rock solid, terrific, stupendous. Pucks in tight, he's amazing. His, his strength that I even saw coming out of Boston College. Right, not... Before that, in Boston College, my apologies. His flexibility, he's six foot four and he's extremely flexible. So when he lays out, he's able to cover a ton of ground. And we saw that more than a few times tonight. And it saved the Leaf season. You really got to say it really saved the Leaf season on that one, on those. Stupendous game from Joseph Wall. Not overreacting to pucks. I loved his uh, his use of the RVH is terrific. Just his ability to seal the short side and seal the lower part of the net on plays that are 
you know, from lower angle shots, call it in the golden triangle below the bottom of the circle above the, the, the red line. He did a terrific job more than a couple times. I, I noticed using that little technique there. Just a hell of a goalie, man. Just a really, really talented goalie. And I know all the people, why, why did you want, um, what's his name? Can't believe I blanked on it. Ilya Samsonov at the beginning of the series. Why did you say put him in for, what was it? Neither were playing very well to end the season. Wool was coming back from that injury. I don't know why they gave him the tougher games. They gave him Boston twice out of the gate. And Samsonov got like Buffalo, Buffalo again, and some other ones. So that was a little bit weird to me. But, hey, it is what it is. I thought that was the right decision to go with Samsonov in game one. Samsonov responded in game two. And it was looking good for most of the game three. And then kind of kicked you in the dick. So Joseph Wool, shout out to Joseph Wool. Oh, the Woolly Mammoth. What a game from him. Our piano playing Lego building goalie is just a, an absolute stud, to say the least. Stud, stud, stud. So what the hell's wrong with the power play? Uh, do you have six hours? <laughs> It just looks like they're frustrated out there. That four-minute power play was some of the worst garbage I've ever seen in my life. I would rather go and watch professional pickleball for 15 hours than to re-watch that four-minute power play because that was just disgusting. It, it, it just snowballed after the first power play, the second power play. And then to get to that four-minute power play was the most disgusting I've ever seen. The entries were abysmal. The entries got even worse, it seemed. I don't know how it was possible because they started not very good, and then it just got worse and worse and worse and worse, and then players just tried to force it. Players tried to do it themselves. Players tried to dump it in on their backhand for some reason. None of it seemed planned on both power plays. And as a result, they ended up with two shots and a four-minute power play. It was horrible. They're rushing plays. They really have to figure out the entry and who and how to get get around Boston's like entry defense because it seems like they they are just trying to do the same thing. It won't work, and then it's the wild wild west after that. On top of that, like. I don't know. It's tough because you want Domi on the power play for the power play entry to simulate what Austin Matthews does. But like and then you you kind of want Bertuzzi for that freestyle, be able to throw it to the net, right? Because Domi isn't patient enough with the puck. Domi doesn't have a good enough shot to really be on that power play. But, you know... I really wonder if you just like I can't get worse. Just I, I think they should really go with consider the swap of Domi uh, Domi for Bertuzzi on the first power play there, like and just run the entries with Marner and Nylander, right? And then who would be the second entry guy? Be Matthew not? Well, no, he's not very good at entries. Never mind. He's skilled. And he has some speed. Why not Matthew Nyes on the first power play? Why haven't we thought of that? He's not smart enough. So, hmm. Hamid and Han, sorry about that. But it really, it like, why the hell not? Why the hell not Robertson? Why not hell not someone? Because this is just such an issue. I cannot believe we are six games into this series and the Leafs have one power play goal and maybe three power plays that they've actually looked good on. That to me is just insanity that they haven't figured it out. And I think Guy Boucher is getting nervous for his job watching it. Oh my God. I can't believe I complained about Manny Malhotra power plays. Those were terrible too, but these are just a different brand of awful. It's like, like trying to compare 
the show mom to the show two broke girls like which would you rather would rather take the tv outside and smash it how about that so i wanted to get in all right let's get into it end of the second period zero zero game what do you remember happens here a little bit of skating magic i really liked it so to start off the play is here that they want to run is to get the forward, which is William Nylander up high. They get the defenseman, Timothy Logan, who has the puck to rotate down, ideally a little bit further down the wall, but the Bruins player meets him. It seems like at the top of the circle. And then you get a high shot from just above the top of the circles from your forward, William Nylander, while there's a two on two battle going on in front of the net and you try to get a tip or a screenshot, right? And on top of that, you have Nyes and Tavares in front of the net. But what happens on this play, puck goes face-off is one, puck goes from Riley to Timothy Lilgren, rotates back up top. The pass isn't, it seems like as Chris, or, eh. Never mind. The center kind of follows Nylander up there. It's John Beecher from the, from the Boston Bruins. He does a great job of taking away the the shooting lane. Essentially, the Leafs are trying to get Boston out of sorts on this one. It doesn't work at all. So then it becomes freestyle. So to back it up, faceoff is one. Puck goes from Riley to Logan, back up high to Nylander. The shot that he's looking for is not there. Beecher's in the lane. Okay, what do we do from there? We reload. Nice little spin move another nice little cut creates a little little bit of space and boom to the net off of charlie mcavoy in it is this more luck than skill 100 percent. but watch the skating ability from nylander here just the, the to make that tight first cut and then the tight second cut and then to be able to throw it on net it, it creates a little bit of a lane because he's, he's showing off his skating skills right again it's luck but just the skating ability by Nylander on that play, I thought was tremendous. Um, but yeah, I would like, yeah. Ideally, you're looking for the forward to to shoot that earlier, but you know what? When you can wheel like William Nylander does, why the hell not, right? So that was that play. This play, I don't even know. I just put together some clips. Oh, it was the three on two, and I wanted to show really good off the puck work from Tyler Bertuzzi. So Tyler Bertuzzi comes through the puck, pat, crosses over his own blue line. It's a three on two for the Leafs. It's Max Domi, Mitch Marner, and Tyler Bertuzzi against, I believe that's Mason Lowry. Mason Lowry. And Charlie McAvoy here. So essentially what the defenseman wants to do on the three on two in this situation is kind of treated as two, two on ones. So if Marner gets, so essentially low Rye is responsible for his, the defense, his far left, which is, or the forward to his far left, which is Mitch Marner. And he's also responsible for blocking that pass to Tyler Bertuzzi. So it's a two on one situation there. McAvoy is then responsible, kind of taking care of the option of, Bert, of Domi as well as Bertuzzi. There is back pressure also from Charlie Coyle, but he's kind of late getting into the play. The nice part about this play, Bertuzzi dishes it early and drives straight to the net and straight into Mason. It like kind of sets a little, little bit of a pick, but he's driving straight to the net. He lifts like, like the he does the maximum amount of interference with him that you can do without getting a penalty, with getting away with it. And it creates so much space for Mitch Marner here. I'm going to play it all the way through. Watch it just on YouTube. And then that's what allows him to get that good shot. That's a great save. That's a fantastic blocker save by, by Jeremy Swayman there. He stays square. He reacts to it. He extends into the save. And it's low blocker too. Those are those can be a little bit tricky. I've I've let in one or two of those. I'll say I, I'll admit 
it's one or two of those before, but just watch Tyler Bertuzzi off the puck assist right here. We'll call. It. I thought that was tremendous just to be able to give Mitch Marner that extra fraction of a second to get into that extra little bit of a better shot spot to take that shot. And then he's able to rip it. And it doesn't go in, but that's, that's a terrific, terrific save. So great job. Although he doesn't look like he's doing much. That's a fantastic job from Tyler Bertuzzi there. Just the timing on the stick lift too. Oh, beautiful stuff right there. I don't even remember what this one. This was a sort. I don't think I mentioned his name yet. And I really should have because I wasn't too complimentary of him last time. And that is Joel Edmondson. I thought played solid in this game as well. Just a few blocked shots, broken up plays, good use of his stick, good use of physicality as well. This was an excellent, excellent sort by him on this play. And this is where when one guy makes a mistake on a play, it can snowball so easily because then you're okay. He makes the mistake. Now player number two needs to make a read off of the mistake to be able to put himself in a different position that optimizes the play defensively. If player two doesn't do that, then player three and player four, which it, it's never going to get to that because the puck's going to be in the back of the net or hope maybe your goalie bails you out here, but watch this play here. It's Timothy Logren. Doesn't take a great angle on Jake DeBrusque in neutral zone, and DeBrusque is able to beat him wide. Now it's kind of a two-on-one, one-two-ish, and it's John Beecher and Jake DeBrusque on the rush here on Joel Edmondson with back pressure from Timothy Logren. Now, Logren realizes I'm not going to be able to get DeBrusque. Hands him off to, to his defense partner, Joel Edmondson, now, Timothy Logren needs to skate like hell and try to catch up to the passing option, which is John Beecher here. But watch this play from Joel Edmondson just to kill this offensive rush. Puts his stick in the lane, chips it away. No harm, no foul. Timothy Logren's able to catch up. Pass is not able to get through. Just his ability to over and just instantly kill it before he's able to release that shot or make that pass there and just put the puck into no man's land. Like this is this looks pretty brutal if Joel Edmondson had not timed this properly and had not read this properly. Like what if Joel Edmondson decided, no, I have to take the pass. I John Beecher is my guy. Jake DeBrusque would have had all the time in the world. It's a good read by Edmondson. Kills the play and we're back the other way. Back up the ice. Back to freedom. Um, I don't remember what this play was here. I really should. Oh, this is the play from earlier. This was the nice play from Simone Benoit. And I think the last. So just a few nice little clips that I saw here and there, you know, trying to highlight uh, this, like something beyond just the big play. Just a few nice defensive plays here and there. Nice off the puck play, some good skating, just some things I wanted to highlight there. Now, how do the Leafs win game seven? Um, go to any sort of religious building, whatever you believe in. They're all correct in one way or another, in a roundabout way. They're all correct. Go there and pray to whatever God you believe in. You don't believe in God, pray to the sun. I don't know. 2013 still stings. 2018 sucked. That one really, really sucked. I really, to be honest, my dad, my dad almost booked plane tickets like in the middle of the second period. And thankfully he didn't <laughs> to go to Tampa for that one. So 2018 sucked. 2019 was just um, excruciating because I thought that was also the year. So you have. Three playoff series, just worth of demons behind you. But guess what? Who cares? Well, the Leafs haven't won a game seven since 2004. Good. Don't care. Ask me if I'm scared. Not at all. In the bag. You play like that again, it's in the bag. Stay out of the penalty box with these dumbass penalties. 
finally those are out out of their system. Thank God. Special teams needs to do something. They need to do something. Like you have to win. You call it a zero on a uh, like in Boston. It's gonna be tough. I like. I know I'm asking for a lot here. A power play goal, a single power play goal. But you're really playing with fire if you don't win the special teams battle. That right makes it a hell of a lot of e- easier of a game. Joseph Wool needs to come up big, but I've seen that twice. Give us one more for this series, and then we'll ask you for four more next series. But we'll cross that bridge when it gets there. So, on top of that, um, in terms of offensively, from what I saw, a couple of chances off the rush there. I, I think continue to, again, punt the puck into the neutral zone, deal with the battles there. Um, generating a little... I saw Mitch Marner try to do it a few times, just generating... And what we saw in actually the Nylander goal. Puck possession is your friend, I believe. You're, they're, they're really struggling to get things into high danger areas, but I believe the more patient that the Leafs are with the puck, the more that those opportunities are going to be able to present themselves. And if they're not there, again, punt it on net when you have an actual lane and when it's open. Because I feel like the Bruins, I'm going to have to calculate it later. It's 1 a.m. I'm not doing that now. But I feel like the Leafs did a much better job of being able to get pucks actually through and on net this game as opposed to what we saw in earlier games because they were a little bit more patient with it. So, yeah. And on top of that, I know it's game seven. I know it's a lot of pressure. The D cannot be afraid to get active. We've seen it a few times from Labushkin. Riley's the main guy. Um, Edmondson we even saw. But the D have to continue to not... Jake McCabe tonight, as I mentioned on that chance from Domi. D have to continue to not be afraid to jump into plays, but be smart about it. Like I say, oh, don't be afraid to jump into plays. And just the first one that always jumps into my mind, I think it was game one when McCabe, I think it was game one against Florida when McCabe pinched when it was all three forwards down low. And then Brody got turnstiled in the neutral zone. I think it was the first goal of the series, too. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid to get creative, is what I'm saying. But don't be stupid. So, anywho, and before I let you all go, the chase for the cup. If you're looking to light the lamp, nothing beats the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. From the start of the playoff beards all the way till the hoist cup, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with the same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. I don't know what it was on DraftKings, but someone, I really have to look their name up too because this was just the worst gambling beat I have ever seen in my life. I was complaining about, oh, Joseph Wool didn't get his shutout. Like, what the heck, man? And Kyle Hartley, shout out to him because this is the worst beat ever. He bet for the Leafs to win exactly 2 nothing in that game. What happened with 0.1 seconds left? It was he it, it, it was a ten dollar bet would have paid out eight ten. Kyle got screwed. So sorry to hear about that, Kyle. Anywho, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code THPN. New customers bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code THPN only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE. NY or text HOPE NY 467369 in Connecticut. Get help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash 
ICE, ICE for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. So I will see you after game seven, no matter what, to announce the winner of the SVP. We'll call it a sports package by now because we got three items in there. Three items. So no matter what, I got to call out that someone's winning that after game seven because the series is guaranteed to end. I promise that. I promise. I promise it's going to end after seven. No more after that. But you got to feel good. You got to feel good. Come on. How good does this shit feel? How good does winning feel? How good does winning two in a row when you're down backs against the wall feel? Feels pretty damn good, I got to say. I didn't even do anything technically, but this this whole thing right here feels ah go Leafs go. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, what a time to be alive! Ah, thousands of years that this planet has been in existence, and I just so happen to be alive to watch a fourth Leafs versus Bruins game seven. But this one's going to have a different result. Promise you that not scared anywho thanks everyone for listening go leafs go